I can never change my colours, I can never change my team, I'm a West Ham fan. But with that being said, I'd rather spend my money going over to Italy and you know watching third division Italian football, but with people who share the same mentality um, about what support should be. In 2016, my football club West Ham United moved to the London Olympic Stadium. I was heartbroken. Leaving behind a whole community at Upton Park, the former ground now plays host to a bunch of posh flats. The first season um, at the new stadium, I started to feel a change. I started to feel more like a customer, like a consumer, and less of a fan. People were more concerned in having a chat, um, you know, talking about the Wi-Fi, talking about what they're up to over the weekend. You know, I was worried that my, my style of support, the traditional way of, of following your team, had died it. I describe myself as an ultra-traditional football fan, vocal, um, impassioned, um, and with the desire to create an atmosphere, that tribalism, it's, it's being part of something, being part of a movement, being with your peoples. So, just over there, 30 yards away, was my old entrance to the stadium, um, the Bobby Moore lower stand, um, and years over there as a season ticket holder. Um, you know, a lot of good memories, pre-match memories coming down here. To see it like this now, um, it feels surreal, it doesn't really feel like it was ever here or you know, any of it really happened. It's, 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 really, it's really fucking strange. The fact that I started to feel like a, a customer rather than a fan really influenced my decision not to renew my season ticket. I'd rather spend my money going over to Italy and you know, watching third division Italian football, but with people who share the same mentality um, about what support should be. I, can, I, can, I reckon I can speak 12% Italian. I reckon I'm 12% fluent. I'm okay, I could survive, I could, I could do all right. So five years back, I was working in a clothes shop and I met an Italian gentleman uh, called Fernando, who is uh, he's from Arezzo, from a small city in, in Tuscany, beautiful place. Um, and you know he's obsessed with West Ham. He said that you know the Arezzo ultras are coming over. Would you mind hosting them um, for an afternoon at the Bowling Pub? This is the Bowling Pub. I brought the Italians here when West Ham was still playing next door at the original stadium. It used to be the centre of the community, but it's now practically empty thanks to the stadium move. In preparation for the meeting, I learned the uh, Arezzo equivalent of Bubbles, I've learned their anthem, which is about three times as long um, with, with thick Italian, which to this day I don't actually know all the words. So after a couple of Stellas and a few you know, kind of half Italian English conversation, I brought the song out and I was, I've started singing it and their faces just changed. I'm shocked that someone who, you know, who supports West Ham would maybe learn a song of a third division Italian team. The, fir the first time I went to Italy I was on my own and I arrived in the city on my own, the only fully English speaking person. And everyone just kind of made an effort with me. Um, and like the, the six Italian words I had back at that, back at that time, um, they went a long way. Everyone was so grateful for the effort. Italy gives me a sense of belonging. Italy and, and specifically Arezzo and that football club and those guys and that city has kind of taken over. It takes me roughly three to four months to, to save up to go to Italy. I go for 10 days, a fair stretch. So that's flights, accommodation, beer tokens and, and football money. Um, when you weigh up the two, perhaps, yeah, I spend a little bit more money going to Italy, but the experience that I take away from that, you know, it, it goes further than what I get from going to West Ham, especially for a season. This is hand-painted by the Ultras of Arezzo, and they presented it to us in the car park outside the stadium. It was I almost broke down crying. It was a very emotional thing. I thought I was going to get beaten up, hugged. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what was going on. Some Ultras have a reputation for violence, but that's only a small minority. I firmly believe that my kind of passionate vocal support can exist without any violence or hate speech. That has no place in any support. Flags, drums, megaphones. Megaphones because if you've got the one guy down the bottom orchestrating the songs, and um, you've got your drums to keep the beat, keep everyone in time, because I sing the same song for about 10 minutes over and over again. Um, flags, um, obviously you've got to put the message out there. There's a massive competition between ultras for the choreography between teams. So you know, there's a bit of a battle going on from end to end. The preparation they put in, the flags, the songs. I mean, those songs are, you know, they're worked on throughout the week and they, they bring it to the game, they've rehearsed it, they know what they're doing. You see that, it can't not have an impact on you. After my experiences in Italy, I wanted to see how some of England's grassroots football clubs are holding on to what's important. Standing, singing of flags. All things that have become synonymous with a football club in the Essex Senior League. So just a stone's throw away from West Ham's former ground, I had a potter about down to Clapton FC to meet Chairman Vince McBee. <laughs> okay Vince, what have we got over here mate? What's well, this about? This, this is the, the, the famous um, scaffold. <laughs> Are you ever going to 
come across a point where maybe you have to leave this type of supporter behind? Never. Never. It's the heart of the club. Those guys are the ones that make the club. If you want to maintain this and this, this level of, you know, of support and these types of fans is, is massively important to me. I want to be standing, I want to be vocal, I want to be part of the community. I've learned from being over here today, you know, it is still happening in places, in pockets. There are some people out there that are still trying to carry on the old traditional style of support. They just lost the last ball. That's the fifth ball that just kicks it over the fucking garages. It's gone. Game over. <laughs> done. Not everyone is against modern football. I get that. Take my mate Callum. He loves a new West Ham ground. So do thousands more. I mean, there's definitely a benefit. You see them giving more money to charity, helping with like schools, setting up youth clubs, things like that. The bigger they become, um, holistically, they'll be able to help people in the area and build a community which might be different to the traditional fan, but to a modern fan, will be similar. Ah, <laughs> it's your shot, mate. No, it's not my I'm shot. It's not my shot. So the clubs, you know, they've got their money, they've got their world-class players, they've got their fancy stadiums with their, you know, new shiny concourses with popcorn and their new types of fans. Um, but what's the cost of that? You know, actually, you know, it costs me. It's cost me my my sense of belonging, my community, my way of supporting. It's, it's cost me my my football culture. <laughs>